So friction is a lateral force between two surfaces. By that I mean, if here is a surface and you are trying to drag a block across that surface. Here we have the two surfaces, but the frictional force is parallel, lateral, is parallel to that surface. And so if you pull it, let's say in this direction, that this is the direction of velocity, the frictional force on the block will be in the opposite direction, right? So it resists the relative velocity. So the magnitude of friction depends on two things. One, how sticky the surface is, and two, how hard you push them together. And so we can write the force of friction is equal to mu, how sticky the surfaces are with respect to each other, times n, the normal force. What values of mu do you think are allowed? A perfectly frictionless surface would have no frictional force, and so mu would be zero. How high can mu get? Can mu get to be one or greater than one? How would we measure mu? Well, we would just have to know the normal force and the force that we had to apply to something to keep it moving at a constant speed. The normal force could be determined by how hard I push down on this, but in the absence of anything pushing, we would just recognize there's a force of gravity pulling down. Is this accelerating downward at negative 10 meters per second squared? No. If it's in equilibrium, we know that the normal force must be equal and opposite. So because this block is in equilibrium in this direction, it's not accelerating upwards or downwards, we can say the force of gravity must be equal to the normal force. And so this would be mg. And so we can measure this frictional force by just seeing how hard we have to pull this to make it move. Okay, so I have a calculator. And one of the cool things, maybe the only cool thing about calculators, is they have these high friction little grippers on the bottom to prevent them from sliding off surfaces. I can find out what the force of gravity is on this by suspending it from the spring balance. And then I can find out what is the necessary force to pull it across here. That's great, man. And then it gets stuck. I love it. Stop. What you saw there was an abrupt increase in the coefficient of friction when the surfaces stop moving relative to each other. Because once the surfaces stop, the molecules nestle into each other and are more attractive. And you need greater force to break that static friction. And once you do, then the molecules are not so attracted to each other and the frictional force decreases. And so when two surfaces are next to each other, we say you have a static coefficient of friction, which will be higher than the dynamic coefficient of friction if the surfaces have relative motion. The oscillations you see are because once the static friction is broken, the friction drops to the dynamic coefficient of friction, causing the calculator to accelerate forward until it stops again, and the coefficient of friction increases once again to static. This plays out beautifully in the way a rosin bow vibrates a violin string. The rosin bow has a very high static coefficient of friction. The violin string is dragged along by the rosin bow until it reaches the end of its transit. Once the static friction is broken, the string easily accelerates back and overshoots its equilibrium position until it's caught by the bow once again and is given another push. One more thing. This function is always true only for dynamic friction. For static friction, you have to say this. Why is that? Well, look, what if I stopped pulling? What would happen to the box? Would it accelerate off in that direction? No, it would just sit there in equilibrium because the frictional force would go to zero. So for static friction, the frictional force will only ever be as big as it needs to be to keep the block holding still. And so if you pull a little bit on it, with a little force, the frictional force will keep it static. If you pull harder, 
that frictional force will increase. If you pull too hard, then the frictional force will decrease because you've switched to dynamic friction as this thing begins accelerating in that direction. This video is facilitated by Neil Schwartz.